Hallelujah, Jesus. Shall we be upstanding this evening as we lift up our hands and we begin to bless the name of the Lord? Please be upstanding and lift up your two hands. Begin to bless the name of the Lord. This is your night of divine repositioning. Glorify Him. Praise Him. Praise Him. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Sandere Boshantaria. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Sing one more time, everybody. Great are you, Lord. Santa Rebo Santa Riaba Santa. Great are you, Lord. Sharebo Santa Riaba Santa Great are you, Lord. Great are you. God of divine repositioning. What we're saying tonight is great are you. Great are you to do what no man can do. To you be praise and honor, majesty and glory. In the precious name of Jesus. As we listen to your word, show forth your greatness afresh. Divinely reposition us. Lord Jesus, at the end, your name be praised. We thank you. Spirit of the living God, take over from the hands of man this evening. And glorify Jesus in this place beyond expectations. And everywhere we are listening, we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray and everyone says it loud. Amen. Amen. Put your hands together for Jesus. Hallelujah. As you please get seated, I want to appreciate our parents in the Lord, Daddy and Mommy Adeboe, for this awesome opportunity to take the first talk this second day of the 26th Holy Ghost Congress of Divine Repositioning. I have been given the topic to speak on which is from shame to glory. And I'll be taking the text from Genesis chapter 50 verse 18 to 20 Genesis chapter 50 the verse of 18 to 20 and his brethren also went and fell down before his face and they said behold we be thy servants and Joseph said unto them fear not for am I in the place of God but as for you ye thought evil against me but God meant it unto good to bring to pass as it is this day to save much people alive the opposite of shame is glory shame can be terrible to say the least so terrible such that if care is not taken it can lead to suicidal thoughts in some individuals or an attempt to take one's life reason the, the psalmist in Psalms chapter 69 verse 20 Psalms chapter 69 verse 20 says Reproach had broken my heart 
and I'm full of heaviness. And I looked for some to take pity, but there was none. And for comforters, but I found none. I make this declaration on this exalted altar tonight that as the Lord lives, every reproach or shame in your life ends tonight. Glory, however, is a delightful thing. It's delightful. It makes the face to shine. It makes the face to radiate. It puts on you honor and makes glad the heart. As we're told in Psalms chapter 34 verse 5, Psalms chapter 34 verse 5, they looked unto him and were lightened and their faces were not ashamed. I declare that as we've come tonight to look to God, he will turn every shame to glory, every reproach to honor, and our faces shall be lightened in the name of Jesus. Shame is what the devil specializes in organizing or orchestrating. Whereas glory is contacted when God steps into one's affairs. The story leading to our text of this evening we reveal what we have just said. And so that takes us to look at four points from the story of Joseph within the time we have. Point number one. When being good and upright turned a problem. When being good and upright turned a problem. Joseph was a good and, and an upright young man. Unlike the rest of his brothers, according to Genesis 37 verse 2, Genesis 37 verse 2, until when being good and upright turned to a big problem for Joseph. He got so hated by his brothers. As we are told in Genesis 37, verse 23, Genesis 37, verse 23, and it came to pass when Joseph was come unto his brethren that they stripped Joseph out of his coat, his coat of many colors that was on him. Joseph lost his coat of many colors. What made him look different and distinguished was forcefully removed by his brothers due to envy and hatred. Suddenly, this young man, for him, shame replaced honor. He found himself just as a psalm is in Psalms 38 verse 20. And I'm going to read it from the New Living Translation. Psalms 38 verse 20, the New Living, New Living Translation says, They repay me evil for good and oppose me for pursuing good. Maybe you have also found yourself exposed to every form of shame and indignity all because of your insistence on being upright and doing what is good you've like joseph been stripped of your coat of many colors that which seemed to distinguish you in the midst of those who are into business as usual 
wait and see what God is about to do tonight. Point number two, when, when found in the pit, when found in the pit, we were told of Joseph in Genesis 37 verse 24, Genesis 37 verse 24, and they took him and cast him into a pit, and the pit was empty. There was no water in it. Being in the pit could appear the lowest that one can, can go or that things can be. But for Joseph, he soon realized it was just the beginning of his ordeal or trouble. Just as it is written in Psalm 36, Psalm 38 verse 6, Psalm 38 verse 6, I read also from the New Living Translation. I was bent over and racked with pain. All day long, I walk around filled with grief. Have you also had a pit experience, maybe in your family, on the job, in the ministry, or in your life? I mean, when you were at your very lowest, And as we were still trying to ask, how can I find myself here? Something more serious came hitting you. And you were forced to say, I thought I was at my lowest already. I didn't realize my trouble was just starting. I have good news for you. God is stepping into your case tonight as he did for Joseph. And you shall be divinely repositioned. If that's for you, let your hallelujah be the loudest here and everywhere you are. Point number three. When sold for nothing. When sold for nothing. Genesis 37 verse 28. Genesis 37 verse 28. Then there passed by Midianites, merchant men, and they drew and lifted up Joseph out of the pit and sold Joseph to the Ishmaelites uh, for 20 pieces of silver. And they brought Joseph into Egypt. A young man of great worth sold into slavery for 20 pieces of silver from a person of worth Joseph suddenly found himself brought to the level of worthlessness all due to bad blood that is uncommon envy and hatred coming from his siblings and to them it was good riddance to bad rubbish as they sold their brother off. I can imagine Joseph's first night in slavery. It may have looked like as we found in Psalm 69 verse 20. Psalm 69 verse 20. Reproach hath broken my heart and I'm full of heaviness and I looked for some to take pity. But there was none. And for comforters, but I found none. Now the question will be this. Why would all this be happening in the life of someone such as Joseph who loved and feared God? Could it be that the devil had a glimpse that the deliverance of millions of people and of nations it's linked to the destiny of this young man called Joseph. And not necessarily that this fellow has committed any particular sin. As we later find Joseph said to his brothers in our text of today, Genesis 50 verse 20. Genesis 50 verse 20. But as for you, you thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good to bring to pass as it is this day to save much people alive the devil being very strategic in operations decided 
instead of wasting efforts pursuing after millions of people. If we can only just get this one fellow, the deliverance of millions and of nations would have been aborted, would have been halted. Many of us by now are aware that the threefold ministry of Mr. Satan is to steal, to kill, and to destroy, according to John chapter 10, verse 10. Joseph, as it will appear, was not an ordinary boy, was not an ordinary fellow. He was a born deliverer. He was born a deliverer. Have you, as a person of worth, found yourself overnight reduced to someone of no worth by so many attacks that had hit your life? Some of these from those who just decided to hate you for not joining them to do evil. There are those who by the letters of their destiny, they are meant to be deliverers. And if the attacks on you have been so fierce, brother, sister, maybe you are one of them. Born to be a deliverer. Satan knows if you are allowed to fulfill what your prophetic destiny says. So many lives in their millions and, 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 and many nations will be liberated, mightily impacted and saved. So hell decided out of strategy to mark you for a demolition. But let's move quickly to the next point. Point number four from shame to glory the day finally came as we read in our text in genesis chapter 50 18 to 20 genesis 50 18 to 20 when those who stripped joseph of his coat of many colors to their dismay and bewilderment found on joseph garments 1,000 times better than what they took away from him. The day finally came when the young man they sent into the pit and as if that wasn't enough but as if that was not bad enough they went ahead and sold him for nothing. Relegated him to a person of no consequence and worth. The same boy suddenly turned to someone. They all fell on their faces and said to him in Genesis chapter 50 verse 18, Genesis 50 verse 18, Behold, we be thy servants from shame to glory. I mean, the day arrived when all those detractors and sworn enemies of Joseph who said good riddance to bad rubbish to him. The day arrived that without Joseph, both they, their wives, and their children will die of hunger. I have been sent to tell someone tonight Wherever you're listening, everything of dishonor, of reproach, of shame you have been through because of your stance on uprightness, it has an expiry date. And when is that date? I cannot hear you. Tomorrow, tonight. I have been sent to tell someone tonight that your coat of many colors, that which made you stood tall and distinguished, which was forcefully taken away from you, it is about to be replaced by by garments of honor 
and dignity thousands better than what you have lost who am I speaking to here tonight that those who sent you into the pits who dehumanized you who turned you to an object of ridicule and shame who said good riddance or bad rubbish to you the day has finally come when they are going to become your servants by compulsion I mean who who has the Lord sent me to tonight let your amen be the loudest because as the Lord lives tonight the Lord will divinely reposition you from shame to glory from shame to glory from shame to glory if you believe shout hallelujah yours may be as a sickness or an affliction that the devil has put on you by which shame has covered you top down all because it caught a glimpse that you are a deliverer I wanted to have you stopped at all costs remember the story of a young sister so many years back I'll be over 12 years or so when we were up north where we were serving in Yola Adamawa State this young lady had an affliction a strange affliction when she's pressed she cannot hold herself and so she will find herself doing it you know on herself times on ending there were places she she can't afford to go there were trips she cannot afford to undertake until her night came just as for someone this is your night <laughs> we're having a program you know called the hour of liberation and so she attended that night and the fire of God picked her up and she was on the floor can't remember for how long the meeting ended and she got she went back home slept woke up in the morning she felt pressed and she rushed into the bathroom thinking things were still the same this time around she had to force the urine to come out affliction finally terminated source of her shame roasted by fire I've been asked to tell you tonight someone wherever you're listening every affliction of the devil that has brought you so much shame and reproach the fire of God will fall and it will roast them all tonight glory will replace shame in your life tonight and, and if I have just spoken to you if the Lord is speaking to you here tonight please rise up with me let us pray rise up with me let us pray very quick let us pray thank you Jesus and your first prayer point is going to be father I cannot hear you father tonight please change my story from shame to glory divinely reposition me Lord go ahead and pray Father, tonight, please change my story. Change my story from shame to glory. From shame to glory. Divinely reposition me. Sharababarabariagadagada. 
Tonight, Jehovah God, please change my story. From shame to glory. From shame to glory. Divinely reposition me, O God. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. The second and the last prayer point, you want to say, Father, send down your fire. I cannot hear you. Send down your fire. Let every sickness, affliction, disease, bringing shame in my life, Catch fire. Let it catch fire. Let it catch fire. Go ahead and pray in the name of Jesus. Father, send down your fire. Send down your fire now, O Lord. Let every sickness, affliction, disease, every delay, every form of delay, stagnation, bringing shame, bringing reproach in my life. Let it catch fire, O oh Lord, tonight. Let it catch fire now, O oh God. Send all your fire, O oh Lord. Hey, male bakatala. Sharababada, bada, bada, bada. Send all your fire, O oh Lord. Let them catch fire. Everything, whatever it may be, bringing shame, oh Lord, in my life. Let it catch fire tonight. Set down your fire now. Send down your fire, oh God. Let them catch fire. Roast them. Thank you, Father. For we have prayed in Jesus' name. Wherever you ask, stretch your hands towards this exalted altar. And if you are viewing these anywhere, stretch your hands towards your screen as I pray. And let your amen sound loud and clear. Father, in the name of Jesus, you have told your son, our Father in the Lord, that this week you are divinely repositioned man. And Lord, we've just listened to your word. That it is time for us to be repositioned, divinely repositioned from shame to glory. I call on you on behalf of everyone whose hands are stretched towards your altar tonight. Lord, let the story of these lives change tonight from shame to glory in the name of Jesus I call upon the God of heaven the God we serve the one who has called this year's Congress every sickness affliction disease delay stagnation bringing shame in your life I decree to catch fire now in the name of Jesus I decree to rust now in the name of Jesus rust now in the name of Jesus
Thank you, Father. It is done. In Jesus' name, we pray. Put your two hands together for Jesus.